Okay, so this is where inverse functions begin. There's one more thing we need to say because I teased it yesterday. Yeah, I don't think this is why. Which is, um, what was the last function we looked at yesterday? Right at the bottom. We looked, we looked at x squared, and what we concluded was how dirty this whiteboard eraser was. Uh, what we concluded was is that x squared has no inverse function. Why doesn't it have an inverse function? Okay, so when we do, we go back to the geometry of it, right? I don't know if you ended up drawing this, but if you didn't, please do it now. When you take the original function and you carry out its reflection, right? What you're getting, we did say this, I remember like yesterday, is you get plus or minus. So you get these two branches, right? And that graph that I've got in blue fails the vertical line test. So it's not a function, it's a relation. So this is an inverse relation that I'm looking at right here. Um, I really shouldn't call it F because it's not a function, but I'll call it, Aww. yeah, I guess I'll call it R. Um, I'm going to call this plus or minus the square root of x, okay? Not a function. However, I want a function. I want a function, right? So being that this fails the vertical line test, and I've switched x and y, right? What does the vertical line test look like for the original function? And the answer is it's not vertical anymore. It will be, because I switched, right? It'll be horizontal, okay? So I can say, because this guy fails the horizontal line test, that is why this is not a function, okay? This failing the horizontal line test will make this fail the vertical line test, okay? So I might just say, um, this fails, which means this fails. Okay, so what we must do, and it's not that complicated really, is to say, well, I just want a part of this function. I just want a part of it such that it will pass the horizontal line test, okay? Now, when you have a look at this, and um, I took it off the screen, but it's different with all those other functions I mentioned, right? Why is it that this function fails the horizontal line test, but none of the others do? This simple function has a particular feature that makes it break this rule. What feature is it? Yeah. It has a turning point right there. That guy there is the problem, because as soon as you turn, you're going to come back and it means it's going to overlap. You're getting that second part, right? And your horizontal line test fails. So therefore, it's going to be either side of this turning point, okay? So here's what I'm going to say. We can restrict the domain. We can restrict the domain of any function that fails the horizontal line test. in order to get a part that passes it, and then you can get an inverse function out of that. So we can restrict the domain of any function by paying attention to the stationary points. I should have said the turning points. Okay. So, because I've got two sides of y equal to x squared, I can equally say, I can take the left-hand side, that'll give me an inverse function, or I can take the right-hand side, that will also give me an inverse function. Why is it that we chose the right-hand side? Think back. I drew a shape yesterday that helps you. If I can choose either side, why choose that one? Uh, hmm. can't have negative square roots. What I am choosing between is these two, not these two, right? Yeah, so I, I think these are okay. They're real numbers, I'm happy with them. Um, they're not equally nice, but why aren't they equally nice? Why do I want these guys and not the others? What problem am I trying to solve? I'm trying to find a length, a side, right? Which has to be positive, okay? So if like the main use case that you're using this function for is to find positive things, 
why not restrict the original function such that you only get positive values back, right? So in this case, we can say f of x equals x squared has no inverse function, but f of x equals x squared in the domain x is greater than or equal to zero, this guy has an inverse function. And we define it, we call it the square root of x. Okay. So, you know, when you go back all the way back to when you first learned what these things are, and they said, yeah, but why can't, you know, if I say um, x equals the square root of uh, 25, why can't it be plus or minus 5? And the reason why is because we define it this way, because it makes so much more sense to us. It's so much more useful if we say, just get one number out of it, okay? Make it a function, not a relation. So, let's just review. What have we said? We know what an inverse is geometrically, algebraically, we know how to write it down. We know how to go from a function to its inverse, go from the domain and range of one to the domain and range of the other, and how to make sure you can test, did I get the right inverse? Did I, did I calculate the right thing? You should be able to combine them and you should return back to your original input, okay? And lastly, we have this idea, which really is gonna be important to us for trig functions, just have a think about it for why. Um, is really, really important for restricting the domain. That will give you the inverse function. Otherwise, you're kind of stuffed, right? You won't get an inverse function out of it. 